Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time I'm playing in Artillery. Dun dun dun! A lot of you might be confused, but I've been playing Artillery a bit more recently because it's the only way to be able to get that extra female crew. Fair enough, I've been able to skip completing the Artillery missions, well at least 15 of them, for the first set of tanks. But I, I've realised that if you want to get all five crew members rather than just four, then you are eventually going to have to play artillery. You're going to be able to not play artillery and still be able to get all of the event tanks. You're always going to miss out on that one extra crew member, which will eventually be four, which is an entire tank of, of female crew. We're going to have to get my act together. So I'm playing in the Object 261. This is the Tier 10 Soviet artillery. And our first shot, we aimed at a Tiger II. He disappeared. So we're unsure whether we damaged him or if we just splashed him. We definitely didn't hit him direct. Whenever you're playing artillery and you, you blind fire, you know if you've hit the target direct if the shell disappears. Now we're aiming at this 1390 and a T-71, but as we can see, we can't quite get the shot on him. The bat chat, however, oh, that's really got to hurt. 1,726 damage done to the only tier 10 tank on the enemy team. I know there's a tier 10 artillery, but still, what a result. That bat chap must be cursing his luck. And when you're playing artillery, it is important to, to try and target those most valuable players. Would I rather shoot a 1390 or a bat chat? Well, that's a no-brainer. And you've got to feel sorry for the guy because really in this matchup, he thinks he's golden. He is the big tank. And sometimes it's up to an artillery player to try and target the vehicles that are maybe going to give your team the, the most trouble. So I feel like I'm not having much luck in that position, trying to get more shots up on the hill. We're kind of losing the hill, and the enemies are advancing through the middle as well. As well as this 110 who's now approached up there. So what I feel is best is if I relocate to the west. The Object 261 is not slow one of the faster tier 10 artillery pieces. Obviously not quite as fast as the French Bat Chatelion, but yes. Still, it's able to relocate. And I'm quite worried about this 110 in his position. I want to take him out quickly. If he gets any closer to me, he might be able to spot me. And then the artillery will be able to take me out, or he will be able to. We blind fire, hit him flush, and take out that 110. Now the battle's really opened up, and can you imagine if I hadn't relocated? If I hadn't relocated, all of these tanks that are pushing up the flank would have had me. It's so important, if you're playing artillery, to be aware of how the battle is going to evolve, to make decisions, and then relocate yourself based upon them. Here we have a T-34. And a Tiger II. I'd rather finish off the Tiger II, even though that T-34 has given me his behind. Unfortunately, even though we waited, until the Tiger II had the rear of his turret and probably the rear of his tank towards us were unable to go through his armor. Still, 614 damage. That is about 40% of his hit points. Now we're just gunning away. This IS-8 is about to come down after this M103. So we're going to pre-aim for what he's going to do. It's very obvious what he's going to do here. We put a shot in. No, oh, it must have hit his mantlet or something because it only did 320 damage. I am firing the standard ammunition on this tank, which means the splash radius is less. You're quite likely to do a little less than if you were to, say, fire the premium rounds in this vehicle. And also, the fact that the Object 261 reloads so quickly and it only has 180 millimeter caliber on its gun means that it does do overall less damage per hit. But when you take into account how quickly it reloads, it can be one of the most devastating tier 10 artillery. We hit the E-75 flush in his side there, doing another 724 damage to him. And we're just keeping on retreating because now I see that this western flank is opening up. And later on, we're going to be able to get shots right down that alleyway. But right now, it's still about securing the eastern flank. If I don't secure this eastern flank, they're going to come and kill me. 
And right now this Yag Tiger is in a 1 versus 2 situation. I see an IS-8 is approaching him, and there's no way for me to hit the 75. I need to kill this IS-8, get him off the Yag Tiger. We fire, we hit him flush, doing 611 damage and removing his tracks. And that allows the Yag Tiger to deal with the E-75 that's in front of him and turn his tank around preventing the IS-8 who was tracked from pushing into him to be able to take out another tank. And so you need to you need to pick your targets in the artillery. A less morally inclined artillery might have tried to take a shot at the 75. But thankfully due to the accuracy of the object 261, I waited and we were able to secure the Yag Tiger's position. It's, it's of mutual benefit, really. I wanted that Yag Tiger to stay alive. Otherwise, those tanks would have inevitably flanked across the west and been able to take me out. And this is going to allow me to have some fun down the west. Here's an IS-3. 689. We don't seem to be missing a shot here, but they are all rather easy targets. Many of the vehicles aren't moving. Well, actually, they have been moving quite a lot when you think about it. I just seem to be on fire in the artillery piece today, and the shots seem to be going where I'm aiming them, which is always nice. Now we have a lone VK versus a T-95, an E-75, and an IS-3. We put in our first shot, hitting the T-95, and also doing damage to the E-75 as well. That's going to slow down that T-95's advance. We're still loading HG ammunition. I'm not sure if it would be better to load AP in some of the shots for this game. Maybe some of the ones where I was shooting in the rear of the tank. But I still feel like doing the consistent damage with the HG is more important. So now you can see me tracking in front of the 75. Why? Because I have to secure his backside. I am the guardian angel of this VK4502B right now as I do 619 damage, finishing off the E-75 that had made a very good flanking maneuver. That's exactly what the E-75 had to do. When you're one versus three, you have to get stuck in and get behind. The VK4502B has the best frontal armor at tier nine. Now I want to take out the T-95. Wait for it, wait for the VK to pull back. He's down. And now, I've put the VK into a 1 versus 1 situation with an IS-3. That should be no problem for him. I press my reload key to inform the VK that I'll be reloading for the next 18 seconds. And let him know that he should play safely. Why does he need to play safely? Because if he doesn't, then it's quite likely the artillery will be able to sling a shot on him. He just needs to stay in this alcove and wait for me to do my work. And I'm doing the work this game. That's the fourth kill and 6,000 damage that we have seen. But remember, we had that blind shot earlier on in the battle, as well as the hit against, uh, I think it was a, a 110 that we hit while he was stealth. So we didn't see that damage. So now I want to, I'm considering relocating to the east. I'm informing that the Yag Tiger that he should go to the G6 and the F5 area i.e. I'm pinging to him right now that he should be attacking around this area. The Yag Tiger going up the hill right now is, is a terrible decision for him. The T-54 spots the VK in the open and the artillery takes him out. That leaves me very vulnerable. I'm thinking that the T-54E1 might push on and then I try and aim back for maybe a shot behind him and then I quickly realize that it's not going to happen. I try and pre-aim for where the Yag Tiger will be aiming, but in retrospect, I should have just got out of here a lot quicker. I finally realize the error of my ways and know that the T-54E1 will be very likely coming straight towards me. Now the T-54E1 was on 1,200 hit points. And although I wasn't thinking this at the time, I should have probably loaded an AP round here. An AP round for this tank does 1,100 damage, and that means that, well, I'll probably have a 1 in 3, actually, no, it wouldn't be a good idea in retrospect. 
T-54 catches me out in the open, hits my track with his first shot, hits my tank with his second shot, and I'm just trying to get out of there right now. I have to get away from this guy before I'm able to fight him. He looks to the, the left as if he wants to get himself into cover. He actually runs away. He turns around and runs away, but a good shot by the enemy artillery was giving lead to the target and took me out. So in retrospect, I probably should have gone further along the north and then gone round this way. Or I should have run away sooner. And that lack of relocation cost me my life and has a big implication for whether this Yag Tiger or not can win the game. If I was still alive here and this Yag Tiger had managed to get into the cap circle, then I would have pretty much been able to support him. T54E1 hasn't reached the cap circle yet, which gives our Yag Tiger at least a chance. Now, after I saved this Yag Tiger here, probably about four or five minutes ago, I really feel like he's he's taken a very long time to apply pressure to the enemy team. While I killed three enemy tanks after saving his backside against the uh, the E75 there. He kind of drove here, then drove back, then drove up and around, albeit that's while the VK4502 was still alive. Really, what he should have done is, as soon as he dealt with these two tanks here, gone aggressive, gone straight into the enemy base and started applying pressure to the enemy team. If he had got spotted by the enemy artillery, he would have most likely been able to take a shot and we would have been able to establish the enemy artillery's position. Alternatively, he could have pushed straight across and supported the VK in a pincer type of movement. Our VK4502B was perhaps a little confident as he pushed around the corner, allowing the T54E1 to attack. But really, I couldn't be asking much more from this Yag Tiger here. He's had a really good game. He's picked up five kills, which is impressive. I don't like his positioning here though, this is this is not good. I can understand that he wants to be by the rock, but right now he is aiming at the rock. This is achieving very little. If he sees the T-54E1 race across here, he's not going to have the track traverse to turn. If the T-54E1 uses this approach, which is very, very, very likely, he's going to appear here and he's going to wreck his tank. The Yag Tiger should either be in the bushes here, getting an overlook around this area, getting an overlook around the bridge, also getting an overlook around here. And if the T-41E goes above him, then he can probably just slip his way down here. His position probably couldn't be worse. And that means that the T-54E1 chews him up, securing the game and preventing the Yank Tiger from picking up his top gun. So all in all, a great game played by both sides. Well done to this T-54E1 to deal with the situation at the end. And he played absolutely flawlessly, waiting in position for when the VK was to advance and coordinated with his artillery to pick up a clean kill. After that, he approached this rock in a careful way and managed to dispose of a Yag Tiger, which had picked up five kills. This base on Tundra is very unique because of the position of this rock. This means that if you're able to kite enemies around it, you can actually cap out. It also means that if you're going back to defend, it is very easy to be able to take out a tank destroyer because as soon as you get to the rock you can proxy spot them and then you can harass them from either side. This was a lovely game where we were able to create a graveyard of tanks before they were able to make it into our base but unfortunately eventually a good shot by the enemy artillery wrecked my tank and turned me into a, a husk of a vehicle at the end of the game. Hopefully this replay showed you the if played well, artillery can be a guardian angel for your team as much as a pain for the enemies. The careful shots that we took in this game nearly turned the tide of it multiple times, but well played to the enemy for still picking up the win. One thing I should mention is the Object 261 has a horrendous gun arc. Thankfully, on this Tundra map, it's quite flat. And while there are hills and mountains for people to hide behind, the Object 261 really does excel on tundra i think the 261 is one of the strongest tier 10 artilleries probably along with the tier 10 british the conqueror gun carrier which is just has a tremendous gun arc which allows you to drop shells over ridge lines and over mounds on unexpecting enemy tanks and when you do hit them you have the splash damage quite often to one shot larger vehicles anyway let's just take a very quick look at the post game stats 
So on closer inspection, it looks like we did do a bit of splash damage to that Tiger II earlier on, as we totaled 1,038 damage to the vehicle, as well as the blind fire that we put in on the 110 that was 505 damage. For this, we got a Gauze Medal, and that's for exceeding 10 times the hit points of your vehicle, as well as the High Caliber because we put out 7,000 damage that game, giving us 757 base experience points, which was more than the majority of the enemy team, even though we lost here. When you use the object 261 carefully, it can be devastating. We hit 11 out of 12 shells that we fired here, and that's every single shot apart from the first one that we blind fired at Tiger 2, which as we just established, still did splash damage to him. And thankfully, due to the mobility of the Object 261, we were able to travel over a kilometer in this game, but it wasn't quite enough. If only that enemy artillery had missed us, we would have managed to escape and probably been able to carry the game at the end with the Yag Tiger. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this replay and maybe it, it gave you a hint or two for when you play your artillery pieces. If it did, please consider giving the video a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments down below what you think is the best tier 10 artillery piece. Are you an Object 261 driver? Maybe you like the Bat Chat. Or maybe you're a British artillery player and you like the Conqueror gun carrier. On a different note, just a quick mention that if you are a raider and you're playing in Draenor, then me, Peppity, and a bunch of other really cool people from the QSF community have been raiding. At the moment, we're 7 out of 7 in High Mall and we're 3 out of 7 in BRF. And if you're wanting to come and join our team, then you must be able to raid only on a Wednesday. We're playing on Horde side, Core Gal, EU. My name is Quickie Baby in game. Come and hit me up if you're interested. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully, I'll see you soon.